So today we're going to talk about Kubernetes policy management. So a few topics we want to cover in, in this session. First, we're going to talk about why you know, policy management matters for Kubernetes, where does it fit in the overall ecosystem. We're going to also deep dive into what the policy working group, which is the CNCF Kubernetes working group does. Um, and then we'll, you know, talk, uh, we'll spend half of the session talking about the policy reporting API that was created in the working group and also talk about policy reporter, which is an open source tool, which you can use for reporting, monitoring and management of policy results. So first quick introductions. I'm Jim Baguadia, co-founder and CEO at Nirmata. We are the creators of Kiverno, which is an open source policy engine, also a CNCF project. I also co-chair in the policy working group in the Kubernetes community, and I am a maintainer of Kiverno. Yeah, welcome also from my side. I'm Frank. I'm a senior software engineer at Levu, a German-based dating platform. I'm also the creator and maintainer of Policy Reporter and open source contributor to tools like Kiverno as well as Falco. <coughs> So quick notification about the CNCF code of conduct. So if you haven't read it, it's available online. Here's a QR code. Also, you know, for virtual attendees, there's closed captioning available. And, you know, for session Q&A, you can enter in, you know, questions on the chat. We will be answering after the session. Or of course, as we have time in the live audience, we'll also take questions there. Um, and thanks to our sponsor for the recording itself. All right, so diving into it, let's start with what policies are and how they fit into Kubernetes. So in, in real life, we all know policies as a form, a set of rules which helps us govern or manage things within an organization. Like within your company, you might have a vacation policy or other policies which are just established. But in the software world, policies are a form of configuration management. So within configuration management itself, you know, you have the ability for some config, like meta configuration, to manage either other configurations or runtime behaviors off your systems. So really, as an operator, as an ops team or a platform team, using policies, you're setting rules to govern the behaviors as well as other configurations within your clusters and environments. So in Kubernetes, of course, we're all you know, familiar with things like network policies, that's an example of a policy object which is baked right in into Kubernetes, part of the API itself. But let's talk about why policies matter, why would you want them, and you know, what does it mean for you as operators or users of Kubernetes? So first of all, Kubernetes configurations tend to be fairly complex, and partly that's because Kubernetes you know, has a lot of different roles and responsibilities into the system, right? In some ways, it's the first platform really designed for DevSecOps. So you have developers trying to deploy workloads. You have security teams who care about workload security as well as platform security. And you have the operations of the platform team that's managing all the clusters, the add-ons, and other configurations. So how do you kind of bring all of these roles together, make sure that they can share cluster configurations and, and still have the autonomy, the flexibility that each role requires? Policies become that digital contract across these roles. So you're codifying how each role should behave, what different users can, are able to do. And you're able to now, in, in Kubernetes itself, again, based at the level of policy you're providing, uh, you are able to you know, um, have these either as Kubernetes resources, custom resources, or native resources uh, through the extensible APIs. So in many ways, policies help simplify the configuration a management for Kubernetes. It helps you know, automate certain portions of configuration. And more importantly, it can help you prevent misconfigurations, which I'm sure you've all seen the headlines and the reports that always tends to be the number one cause of security issues it is by either lack of you know, proper configs or misconfiguration in Kubernetes itself. So within Kubernetes today, there's at least four different classes of policies. There's API objects like we talked about network policies or there's RBAC you know, configurations, things like that. There's built-in admission controls. So within the API server through flags, you can manage several different types of admission controllers like for quotas, for defaults, et cetera. 
There's the validating admission policy, which is an alpha feature introduced into Kubernetes, which lets you program the API, which you know also lets you exercise policy checks on the a on API request itself. And then finally, there's dynamic admission controllers, which are more responsible for complex checks when you need to reach out to other systems or anything that requires you know, multiple objects and configurations to be checked. So typically in a production cluster, you, you likely end up using, if not all, at least most of these types of policies. And all of these, again, serve you know, different purposes, different roles, and have a you know, place in terms of your overall toolbox. So within the policy working group, and for those of you who may not know, in CNCF, you know, there's of course the, the oversight committee, but then there's also special interest groups called SIGs. Uh, and so there's networking and you know, SIG auth and SIG security and others, but then there's working groups which are cross-functional and also kind of play different roles. So policy working group is one of the working groups Chartered, of course, which, you know, simplifying, defining, and, you know, kind of uh, advocacy for policies and how policies should behave um, within Kubernetes itself. So some of the projects that we are currently, uh, as well as, you know, looking at in the future, doing within the policy working group. So first off, the policy reports API, which we'll talk about and, and, and you know, also show in some demos. There was a policy management paper which we have produced about uh, roughly a year ago, uh, and we're you know looking at doing a V2 of this uh, to you know describe some of the newer features, newer capabilities, and developments. There's also a new paper on you know Kubernetes governance, um, risk, and compliance using policies as a building block for these business functions, and we'll you know briefly touch on that. There's also you know discussions on how do you go from policies do other you know, things in your business like compliance management uh, if you were to map you know, policy results into that. And then finally, you know, we're also looking at what should we do in terms of policy management for the Kubernetes docs. Uh, so today the, that area is a little bit lacking, so we're, we will be updating that and you know, publishing things there quickly. So just quick references, you know, certainly these are things you would want to look up in more detail later based on your interests. The policy management paper, like I mentioned, was published uh, about you know, roughly a year ago. And the two things it covers well, you know, as well as a few other areas. So first off, it describes a reference architecture and the different components involved in policy management, especially in a multi-cluster environment. So it talks about policy enforcement points like admission controllers, uh, or you might be running policy enforcement in your IAC or CICD pipelines. And then it talks about policy administration points and what the function uh, of those are, like some management tools um, which are sitting outside of Kubernetes and operating across multiple clusters. Um, and then it also kind of covers how policies fit into the lifecycle, like the different phases from build to you know, deploy to run, uh, and where policy management fits, what kind of tools you would want to look at, Again, whether it's for configurations or runtime policies, et cetera. The GRC paper expands on this and you know, starts mapping policies as building blocks into other higher level business functions. And what we're specifically exploring in that paper and, and describing is how you can use policies as part of your overall security frameworks. And also, you know, if you're kind of looking at this for Operations automation, so policies are great to automate certain things through mutate and generate, you know, type of policy definitions, as well as, you know, for cost management, right? So most of us who are operating clusters, especially if they're cloud-based, you know, resource management, cost management becomes important and policies play a critical role in that as well. Um, so here's a you know kind of scan code for the GRC paper, and this is open for public comments right now. It's in draft phase. Those of you who are interested, you know, I'll, you know, I'll leave this up, and of course it's going to be in the slides. Uh, but please take a scan, read through. Uh, let us know if we are on track. If this addresses you know the right questions, and if any, you'd like to see anything else in there as well. All right, so, and one other project, you know, to quickly mention is compliance mappings, right? So 
today, of course, in the industry, there's um, things like, you know, OSCAL, which is a language developed by NIST, the U.S. Institute of Standards. Uh, for its, OSCAL stands for Open Security Compliance Assessment Language. And what it does is it provides an, uh, you know, format, a well-defined structured format for compliance assessments, right? And we all, you know, have been through like whether it's anything from SOC 2 to NIST to other compliance standards, ISO standards. Um, you know, we've all been through audits and sort of these compliance assessments and today it's very manual. So what we're exploring here is how do you take things like, you know, which are automated in systems like Kubernetes, like policy definitions, policy reports, and then map them back into these compliance standards to move from these manual processes more into automated and continuous compliance. Um, however, this, you know, what we're not sure about today is whether we'll take this on in the working group or we will move this into a CNCF level project <coughs> and look at compliance, you know, across systems, um, more from not just Kubernetes' perspective, but even other CNCF tools, et cetera. But anyways, it's a key initiative that we're gonna pursue one way or another. So. Certainly, if this is of interest, it's uh, something you would want to track and also feel free to share feedback, thoughts, and comments on this. And then finally, I talked about the docs update, right? So one of the projects we're gonna take is this is the current Kubernetes policy page and certainly it's lacking in many ways. Uh, so lots of things we can do over here and we're gonna start uh, work on this within the policy working group. So again, feel free to chime in with thoughts on what you would like to see here and how this can be more helpful. So quickly to summarize, you know, what we've covered so far before I hand off to Frank, who will talk about the policy reports in more detail. So policies are essential for Kubernetes. You know, you are gonna be using, if not one, probably all of the four types of policies I mentioned. Um, they become a key building block for you in your toolbox, again, for security, compliance, other aut automation <coughs> type of workflows. And the policy work group, you know, again, our focus and goal here is to make it easier, make it more understandable where policies fit, why they're needed. And of course, you know, as new things come out in Kubernetes, sort of publish uh, other guidance papers and uh, things to that, as well as create software, which eventually gets promoted to SIG level or Kubernetes level projects like we'll talk about next uh, with the policy reporting. So with that, let me hand off to Frank, who will cover the policy reports in more detail. Yeah, thank you, Jim. So <clears throat> after Jim's introduced us in the, into the policy working group, I want to show you how the policy report API is used to provide feedback about policy validations in our clusters. And when we talk about the policy report API, we are talking about the policy report and the cluster policy report CID both providing the policy report results for either namespace or cluster scope resources. And these um, results contain information about the status of our policy val validation and optional metadata, such as the related resource, rule, categories, and some more. Um, the policy report API has two main use cases. At first, they reflect the current validation results of existing resources and compared to the policies applied there. Examples for this use case are Kyverno validation policies, the QBench adapter, or the Trivi operator with the policy report adapter. All these tools scans the resources already existing in your cluster against their policies and report with a policy report about the results. The second use case is a more locked, like a locked. So policy reports are used as locks for runtime security tools like Falco or Tracy and providing the, uh, a list of last recent violations of various policies um, because they has a nature for infinite growth. You are mostly have some kind of configuration to limit this list um, and last results then dropped as soon as the um, limit is reached. We also have other um, use cases, but these use cases are very tool specific. One of them is um, in the use of the open cluster management project, which checks if a required policy is in a cluster violated by checking the corresponding um, yeah, fail results in our policy reports. 
in this use case, um, the project is a, acts as a um, processor of policy reports. So it does not create their own. It uses them from other tools and check if a policy from this tool is violated. And now I want to introduce and show you Policy Reporter, which is also a processor of existing policy reports from other tools. It's intended to provide observability and monitoring possibilities in your cluster based on the um, showed policy report API. Um, it has, yeah, this is a list of a few features. These features are intended to solve challenges you would have with the normal get and um, show me all policy results in our clusters because information from policy reports are distributed against namespaces, resources, or even clustered, uh, clusters in a multi-tenant environment. So we have features like sending results to external tools, to Grafana Loki, Slack, or S3 buckets. It provides metrics, so you are able to show your violations in well-known monitoring solutions like Grafana. It also ships with a standalone web-based web UI, um, which also has um, all detailed information. It provides some filters and graphs. You can send email reports on a um, cron base to, from different clusters to a central email about the current status of your cluster security. And all these um, features also have granular configuration and filtering options. So you all um, you only process in sending results you're really interested in. Um, to yeah, show you these features, I prepared a little demo. Um, I have some tools already installed. So we have Prometheus and Grafana with Loki for monitoring to, as monitoring tools. We have Kyverno and um, the Trivi Operator, along with the Trivi Operator Policy Adapter for some security tools that produces some policy reports and Policy Reporter itself. Um, if you want to you know, see how it's configured, um, I prepared a GitHub repository. And you are also very welcome to try it out yourself. This is a public instance of the Policy Reporter API uh, UI. I will just show you and it's not that mobile optimized but yeah you get an idea um, how it's worked and what you can do with it so um, before we start with the actual ui i quickly show you how this policy report we talked about looks like so this is an um, policy report created by Kyverno. It's yeah, just provide us um, one result with some metadata like a category. We have a message and the related policy. We have also the related resource, which is an um, engine spot in this case. It passes our validation. And yeah, we also have some summary in case we have more information or results. Um, then we have a quick look on our policy reporter configuration to see what features are enabled and how this looks like in a, our use case. So we want to send only warning results and higher to our Loki instance to have some kind of logging. We configure Loki by just um, configure our host for it. We can add some custom labels if we want to. And we also want some kind of real-time notifications for some stuff which we are using uh, is the Slack integration. So we are able to um, set some filters. For example, we want to exclude um, Trivi system and Cube system for our general Slack channel. We can use the channels feature to add multiple Slack channels to our configuration. So we don't have one channel which gets all results, which yeah, is not really an overview. So we configured a Kyverno validation uh, violations channel, which just gets um, results from Kyverno for single policy. And we exclude the cube system namespace. We do quite similar stuff for our Trivi validations with config audit and vulnerability scanning. And 
because it's very important if something happened in the cube system, we want to push notifications um, related to the cube system namespace in one related um, Slack channel. Then we also have a look into the Grafana and Prometheus integration. For this, we enabled the metrics. There are different modes for metrics. Um, custom provides only the labels we are interested in, so we can um, reduce the cardinality a, a bit. We also added the integrated monitoring subchart. Um, this is an integration with the Prometheus operator and yeah, predefines some dashboards and also do some pre-configurations with service monitors, CRDs. And last but not least, we just enabled our UI um, with the Kyverno plugin, so we have some special features related to the Kyverno system. So now that we have a quick look how the configuration looks like, we just jump in um, our terminal where we will create an engine to violate some stuff in our cluster and hopefully create some notifications. So first we can have a look into Slack where we already get the first um, validations. So in our general channel, we yeah, had no really filter except for the cube system um, exclusion. And because we created our engines into the test namespace, we got our informations with the policy and description and yeah, some metadata. Um, and that's for all findings related to Trivi. And now also Calverno. Then we have the dedicated channels for Calverno where we only get this one um, policy result we configured. So we have our message and also in this case additional information about the resource, the category, and some other stuff, and also, yeah, the trivia. So you get an idea. We are able to route our notifications to dedicated Slack channels. This could be helpful um, if you have some kind of multi-tenant where some teams um, related to a specific app or namespace, and you are able to route the notifications to the correct team. Um, the same goes for the Loki integration. So when we now run our Loki um, query, which just looks for events with the source of policy reporter, um, yeah, we see quite the same. We have now our violations only for warnings from Trivi as well as Caverno in our Loki and can do some analysis on it when it happened and yeah, can aggregate and filter them with all possibilities Loki have. Um, now we check out our Grafana integration. So as I mentioned, Policy Reporter has a direct integration into the Prometheus operator, which I use in this uh, cluster. And this integration provides um, three dashboards. All have this Policy Reporter text, so we are should be easy to find them. The one is more like an um, overview, so you have an idea how many policies in uh, your namespaces fails. If you have cluster policy results, also the amount of them. You have a timeline and yeah, some details about um, the source, the namespace policy and status. That's are the labels we configured. Um, yeah. And then you are able to know where you have a look to check what um, really failed. The other dashboards are quite similar with the difference that they are, um, have more information also about past and warning results. So you can see um, all your policy report results independent of the status also with a timeline and the details. Um, if you have a sandbox cluster, some dev environment, or just want to try it out, and you don't have a big monitoring solution because it costs a lot of resources, um, we can use the presented policy reporter UI. 
which is just a simple web-based um, integration and a replacement or additional to the Grafana integration. So you get quite similar informations. At the top, we see our integrations into the different um, other tools we configured. So you have an idea, okay, I have my Loki integration for this cluster as well as Slack, Caverno violations and Trivi. Then we have our dashboards, which have information about all our um, sources we have configured. In our case, it's Trivi with its different reports as well as Caverno. So we just so, uh, see what fails in our cluster and if we want to have a more detailed look, we go to the source we are interested in, like Caverno, and yeah, now see um, quite the same as in the Grafana dashboard with all informations, messages, and some filters you can use to only have a look in the subset of your resources and check out where you have um, or what policies fails and what you can do to make them pass. Um, the same goes for cluster policy reports. The only difference, we have no namespaces. Um, and yeah, a logs page, which is, which is some alternative to a low-key um, instance, very simil uh, simple to just have a timeline when which violations happened. Um, at least we can uh, have a short look into the Caverno integration. It's just an overview about your policies with the background scan um, feature enabled or not. The audit actions that so we have audit to just create reports. We also have enforce to block requests. We can see the YAML configuration behind our um, policy. And if you want to send your reports in a more readable format also to external or other team members that, which don't have directly access, you are able to create this HTML reports, you also are able to filter for namespaces and policies and this creates a simple web page which you can persist and send to anyone else. Yeah, I think that's it and now your turn. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, so just to quickly, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, some of the ongoing and, and current projects in the policy working group and summarize. So one thing we're actively looking at doing is now, you know, working towards promoting the policy report API that Frank demonstrated to either a SIG level or a Kubernetes level API. So this can be further standardized, used by different tools and projects. Um, like I mentioned, we're also actively working on completing the GRC paper. So talking about how policies and policy reports can be mapped into other functions. Um, we will be starting a project or at least a PR and creating a PR on the uh, Kubernetes talks. And then also discussing where and how the compliance mapping fits in so you can take policy results and map them into compliance assessments itself. So certainly if you're interested in any of these, feel free to join any of our work group sessions. We meet every Wednesday or every second Wednesday uh, at 9 a.m. or uh, yeah, it was 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, so that all of the details are of course in the web links. Um, and we have a GitHub repo where most of all of our projects and activities are. And if you go under the Kubernetes SIGs and working group pages, you should be able to find us there as well. Also, please give us feedback on the session to know, you know, what else you'd like to, of course, see covered in future sessions and how we did and, you know, how the content was. And with that, I feel, I think we have a few more minutes for Q&A so we can take some live questions. And of course, you can also follow up um, on the Slack channel uh, with other questions later. So any questions from folks in the audience or thoughts, comments, feedback? A question. Yeah. Hi, Jen. So uh, this is great. I like what you guys are working on. Thank you. 
Thank you. This is great. I like what you guys are working on. Are there things in upstream Kubernetes that you feel are missing that are limiting your ability to do more policy work? So certainly, you know, like we uh, mentioned briefly, the validating admission policy, being able to run things in the API server, that was uh, perhaps in some ways long overdue and a good addition, right, to be able to run policy checks directly. Um, in, in terms of the, the other major area was, of course, the reporting, et cetera. So the more we standardize there, and there are some good discussions in the community on how do we scale the reporting uh, to, you know, to take uh, data from different sources and be able to you know, create this uniform API, which other tools can consume. So those are the, at least the two areas, and, and then moving you know, beyond just validating to mutating policies and even you know, perhaps to be able to generate resources, et cetera. Those seem like good, good steps uh, as we kind of look at more standardization across the board. Hello. <clears throat> so I was interested in more examples uh, how policy uh, policies are used. For example, had uh, someone who is trying to create their own uh, Azure, uh, for example, having their pool limiting, uh, you know, resources uh, per uh, pod and stuff like that. So maybe some examples. Sure. Oh, yeah, so the basics we typically see in terms of policy examples are starting with the fundamentals like pod security, right? So today, of course, in Kubernetes, PSPs have been deprecated. Now we have pod security standards. There's the built-in you know, pod security admission. But even being able to, you know, not every cloud provider or managed Kubernetes service will have the same level of pod security. So really, as operators, we need to be cognizant of that and make sure that we're enabling all the right secure defaults for pod security, which deals with the security context in every pod. Now, beyond pods, there's several you know, different security checks you will want to perform on workloads, like services, <coughs> deployments, you know, stateful sets. There's also a lot of best practices, right? Being able to make sure uh, that you have things like you know, the resource quotas or other kind of you know probes and health checks and things like that defined for each workload so policies those are you know some of the fundamentals uh, beyond those you know there's use cases like software supply chain security so signing image uh, signing images verifying those uh, verifying attestations and metadata so those are becoming fairly popular and widely used uh, as well as you know other more complex checks where you might want to even query out to other APIs or different tools, like maybe you want to check with open cost and make a policy decision based on that, right? So just a wide variety of things. With some projects, also there's a lot of automation you can do with policies, like distributing your image registry secrets, your CA certificates to each workload, things like that, which are uh, common painful things people end up doing in clusters which policies can help automate. All right, so I think we're right on time. So thanks everybody and you know, feel free to stop by either the Kiverno booth or we'll be in other sessions as well. Thank you. Thanks everyone.